After 10 years of using Linux, I finally mustered up all the courage to try out Gentoo Linux. And I thought, with all of the experience I had with Linux, what could possibly go wrong? So I prepared my USB drive, read the handbook on my phone, and started my journey. The first thing I noticed is that the installation process is somewhat similar to other distributions in the beginning. I need to hook up the internet, prepare all the drives, and mount them before anything else. And then, the installation process diverts itself from other distributions. The first major difference is that with other distributions, I didn't have to worry about the code compilation because usually the installations are using binary packages and all I need to do is to choose which package I want on my future system. But installing Gen2 is basically compiling the whole system from the source code. It provides me the option to tune the compiler and indicate which features of the packages I want or don't want before even installing it. For example, I can disable GNOME and Bluetooth feature for all the packages I install if I only plan to use KDE in a virtual machine so I can maximize the performance on my future system. The second difference is the kernel customization. Gen2 provides its user the freedom to fully customize the Linux kernel during the installation process. Because I don't have Intel CPU and GPU in my system, I got to take off lots of Intel related features here, which means I don't have to install the unnecessary drivers in my system. And now let's see all the issues I ran into during the installation. The first major one was the kernel customization. There are three ways of compiling the kernel, fully manual, gen kernel, and distribution kernel. I tried them all in my two installation attempts. The first time, I was using the manual customization. The system refused to boot up after I set up everything. And after some analysis of my installation process, I realized that there are just so many moving parts in the installation and I was trying to achieve everything at the same time. Not only was I following the installation part in the handbook, I was also trying to feature in the NVIDIA at the same time. It was just too many options to manage for a beginner like me. So I decided to try again. This time I was using the gen kernel option. It just froze without going anywhere for an hour. This was because I was in a rush during the second installation and I wasn't follow the handbook in a correct order. It was Saturday midnight. I've been trying to install Gen2 for more than 24 hours with little sleeps and breaks. I was tired, out of patience. So I decided to go with the distribution kernel, which thankfully did work and put me to bed. Next morning, I was able to set up the KDE desktop environment and put into it, but the story didn't end there. First, I noticed there's no internet connection after the boot up because my laptop doesn't have an ethernet port. So I installed the WPA supplicants while following the installation handbook. But the issue here is that the handbook does not mention that in order to connect to Wi-Fi, additional configuration is needed. It took me a while to figure that out. Then I move on to fixing the sound issue by adding the pause audio to the compiler flag, only to find out the graphic interface stopped working after the reboot, which means the KDE interface we saw here was the only time I was able to use a graphical interface throughout my weekend. With a lot of unsuccessful compilation after that, at 5.30 p.m. Sunday afternoon, 48 hours since my first installation attempt, I officially declared my first defeat to Gentle Linux. But I'm glad I gave it a try because I've learned a lot of new things about Linux during these two days. So these are the suggestions I can give for the new beginners who wants to try Gentoo Linux. First, have patience. Gentoo Linux requires a lot of waitings during the installation process. I had to wait for two and a half hours just for the stage three packages to be compiled. 20 minutes each time I compile the kernel and one and a half hours for the KDE desktop environment. So make sure you are mentally prepared before you start. I mentioned that during my second time installation, I was not able to follow the handbook in the correct order. This was because I knew that the stage three compilation would cost me another two and a half hours. So I was trying to start it before my dinner. I was rushed into things and missing steps here and there. And it ended up costing me more time just to jump back and forth to fix things. So if you think you're losing patience, just take a deep breath, get up and walk around, 
before you proceed. The second thing I learned is that if you're using a phone to read a handbook, make sure it is in the landscape mode. This was one of the biggest mistakes I made during the second time installation. Because after the first time installation failed, I could have easily mount all the disks in the installation USB and compile the kernel right there. But because I was using my phone in portrait mode, the mount commands were split into several lines, which I didn't realize. I thought I couldn't mount any disk because the system was corrupted. So I formatted the disk right before I turned my phone horizontally. So I ended up wasting another two and a half hours just to compile all the stage three packages again. Thirdly, learn one thing at a time. There are so many parts in Gen 2. The compiler flag, kernel customization, NVIDIA, GRUB, X11, desktop environment, and network. It is impossible for a beginner like me to set up everything correctly in the first try. And I was too ambitious to see it. And after my defeat and some self-reflection, I decided to learn one thing at a time. Thanks to Gen2, now I know that I can manually customize any kernel on any distribution. All I need is to download a kernel, unpack it, and use the make manual config command. It is also quite easy to test a new kernel by adding it to the grub as a new boot entry and boot it there. Also, I can learn how to customize the compiler flag in a virtual machine without worrying about the hardware support, which led to my next point. Use a virtual machine. With a virtual machine, I can eliminate all the hardware options like NVIDIA and Bluetooth, which will also make the compilation and learning faster. With a virtual machine, I can read the handbook in a browser on a host machine, which will be less likely for me to miss any steps. With a virtual machine, I can easily check if my commands are correct. And with a virtual machine, I don't have to worry about not having a working system during the weekend. And finally, I want to thank all these YouTubers who have made awesome installation guide on Gentile Linux. They have made my life much easier when I was trying to navigate around the handbook. That's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And once again, if you think this video is encouraging you daily driving a Linux distribution, please hit the like button. And I will see you in the next one.